Do you ever just wish you could get two or more different applications to talk to each other? Perhaps you would like to have a task from a template show up in ClickUp when someone scheduled your time from Calendly. Integrating applications like this doesn't have to break the bank. Here's looking at you, Zapier. Today, I want to introduce a Zapier alternative that's free to use. It can easily sync data between 90 plus apps with no coding. But if you're into coding your own custom solutions, it's easy to extend with custom functions and logic with minimal engineering effort. Let's talk about Notimation.io. I've been using Notimation in my business for the better part of a year, and it has been an excellent addition to my workflow. We are only scratching the surface. There are 90 plus apps that you can connect with no coding, and each might save you an amazing amount of time. There's just one catch. At this point, there's no hosted option, which means that we have to install this software on our own server. Now, that might seem daunting to some of you, but the team over at Notimation.io have done a great job of making the process about as easy as it gets. And today, we're gonna to walk you through the whole process so that we can showcase some of those awesome options inside of Notimation.io. That brings us to today's affiliate sponsor, DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is where I host all of the websites and apps that I manage, big and small. They make it simple to launch in the cloud and scale up as you grow. With an intuitive control panel, predictable pricing, team accounts, and more. There are more than 100,000 developer teams worldwide that trust DigitalOcean to support their business with a 99.99% uptime SLA for all of their services. DigitalOcean's predictable pricing means you'll always know what you'll be paying per month with a flat industry leading pricing structure. And finally, and probably most importantly, they have free around the clock technical support for all of their customers with benefits for premium support subscribers. Use the link in the description below to get a $100 credit to use over the next 60 days. So let's jump into installing Notimation on our own server hosted at DigitalOcean. In, in this tutorial, I'm just gonna be following the server installation instructions for Notimation off their website. Link in the description below. After you've created your, your DigitalOcean account, you're gonna be brought to a page that looks something like this. Uh, over here are all the different projects that you're working on. This is like folders of servers that you're gonna be having in the future there. Uh, we're gonna click on this green button right here that says create a droplet. And the first thing that's gonna come up is this, some of these configuration options. I, I go for the very most basic option on these types of services because uh, by far and away, the person who's gonna be using this the most is actually just me. And so if there's only one person hitting this, or maybe it's just your team that's that's hitting this, um, you don't need a whole lot of, of server juice to to make this happen. Next, uh, pick a data center region that's close to you. That's important for speed and for other things. This one's closest to me. As far as authentication goes, you're going to want to use an SSH key. I've already uploaded my SSH key here. If you don't know uh, anything about those, you can Google it or put it in the comments below. And um, if there's some interest, then I'll, I'll make a video about um, how those work. Next, we wanna create a host name. And here we're just gonna say uh, notimation.funnelpress.link. That's where I'm gonna be putting this particular server. So you can tag them and click create droplet. That's going to get, uh, that's gonna get the process rolling for actually having a server set up. And here in just a minute, we're gonna go through and set up the DNS for this droplet so that it can be available on the internet. Now that this is finished, what we're gonna do is just click on this and it's gonna copy the, the IP address for this droplet and we're gonna be able to jump over to Cloudflare. Now, I use Cloudflare as my DNS provider. Wherever you have your 
domain name hosted, they're gonna have a DNS service uh, and you can do the same thing or very similar things. They all look pretty similar. So I'll just jump in here. As you can see, here are all of the uh, the records for this particular domain name. Now, funnelpress.link doesn't actually point anywhere yet. I just use it for uh, examples and things like this. So we're gonna add a brand new record. This is an A type record. Um, and the we're gonna do N8N and then over here, we're gonna paste the IP address from uh, DigitalOcean that we just did. And then I'm gonna turn this off. Um, this is not important for what we're working on. And there you have it. The DNS is set up for connecting our DigitalOcean droplet to the domain name n8n.funnelpress.link. The next thing that we're going to be working on is setting up and configuring the server from the command line. There's no graphical user interface for any of these servers. So you do have to jump in there, but uh, Notimation has done a great job of giving all of the instructions and we're gonna go through all of them right here. Right after we open up our terminal and um, you can do that by using the spotlight search terminal uh, right there, you can do that. You can also jump into it from your launch pad uh, terminal um, or I have it here in my dock. If you're a Windows user, you're gonna be using um, putty. Connecting over an SSH connection is a little bit outside of the scope of what we're working on right here. So um, look up how to connect to a box through SSH if you're on Windows. Editor John here. I totally forgot that inside of DigitalOcean you actually have a console so you don't have to use putty if you're on Windows per se or if you don't if you just don't want to to go that route. I find it's a little bit easier to use the the Mac terminal. It does amazing things but if you don't want to use that, you can come in, click here on your server, and then you can select on the console option right here. That's going to open up a console for you to then log in just like you would from the terminal. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, back to the tutorial. Now I'm just typing in here the SSH command for uh, remoting into this computer here. As you notice, I'm using root at uh, nan.funnelpress.link. That's the same thing I just set up in the DNS there. Now this is going to ask me if I'm sure that I wanna to connect to this because I've never connected to it before. I'm gonna type yes here so that I can jump into this computer. The first thing I like to do when I jump into a new computer is just make sure that everything has been updated so the command is apt update, and that's going to go and fetch everything and see if there's packages available to be updated. As soon as that's finished, we'll do the upgrade. So as you can see here, 149 packages can be upgraded, and we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and do that here with apt upgrade. And it's gonna ask us if we're sure we wanna install all of the packages there listed. We're gonna say yes, we wanna have everything here at the latest. Many times when I'm installing a brand new server, it'll ask me if I would like to update the this right here, this is Grub. Um, I will always go with the install the package maintainers version. And, and that's just because this is a brand new box. Um, I don't have to worry about breaking anything. So I'm, I'm good to go ahead and update. And with that, that is finished. The only other thing that I wanna do that's outside of the server setup documentation is I, I like running the program as an admin user and not as the root user. And so I'm gonna go through and, and create a new user. Here we have the add user command, add user John, and it's going to ask me for a new password. And so I'm just gonna type in a generic password here because this is not my actual notimation box. Uh, and then you can just uh, type whatever you want there and say that the information is correct. We wanna allow this user to become an admin. So we're gonna allow them pseudo access. And then the last piece for uh, creating this new admin user is we're gonna switch user into John and make sure that that works. And as you can see, um, without the sudo command, uh, I have permission denied. And uh, with that, I can, I can list things in the root directory. So uh, now this user, John, is an admin and we're gonna use that uh, moving forward. The next step is we're going to be installing Docker. And so I'm going to just copy and paste the commands off of the server installation page. Uh, a lot of these are pretty simple. Um, they're just copy and paste. So um, 
that one is installing a certificate. Um, this one is, in, is setting a key. We're gonna be adding um, a repository right here. And then we need to run one more update as we added that new repository. Again, all of the links are gonna be in the description below for um, where to get all of these commands. Or you can pause the video and uh, type them in as you see them. The next thing we're gonna be doing is allowing Docker to be run by my admin user. And so that's su sudo user mod um, dash ag docker john. The next step is going to be installing Docker Compose. And so we're going to just copy and paste the, the command to install that one. In the server installation instructions, it then says, uh, go ahead and update your DNS to point to this new installation. We've already done that, so we're gonna move on to step number five, which is creating our Docker Compose file. To do that, I'm going to change directories into the local user home folder, and I'm going to create a new file called docker-compose.yml. So I'm gonna use the vim command to open that up and uh, I'm gonna just copy and paste the file that they give me because we don't really need to change it too much. When using vim, I'm going to use the I key to insert text into this document, command V to paste right there. The way Docker works is it creates containers for the applications to run in. And so naturally there's not a way to get to the files from the host machine. And sometimes that's beneficial to have a folder that you can interact with that is also available in the Notimation, depending on what your use case is. Um, to be able to map that and allow a folder to be available in both the Notimation application and on your host machine, um, you can come in here and add a volume. That volume should look like this, um, where I've just put in my username here. And again, um, this is also in the server install instructions. So I've got that set up and I'm gonna do a escape and then W colon WQ to write the file and to quit Vim. That's going to get that finished up. The next thing we're gonna be doing is creating an environment uh, file. So to do that, we're going to do a vim one more time and the .env. Again, I'm going to just copy and paste from the in, uh, env file that they are recommending. So again, I to insert, copy and paste. I'm going to go through and change some of these values. For one, my home directory is going to be slash home slash john and then n8n. The top level domain name is going to be what we set up in our DNS. That's gonna, for me, that's funnelpress.link. Then the subdomain to serve from, again, this is correct, N8N. So what we have here is, because this application is going to be public on the internet, you don't wanna allow just anybody to come in and set up their webhooks and set up all sorts of things. And so you do wanna create some kind of authentication here. And then this is where you set that up. So you are gonna have the, the username and the password. As this is just a tutorial, I'm going to just leave it at that. Next, you're gonna to wanna to set your time zone. You can find the time zones here on Wikipedia. Um, a list of time, uh, TZ database time zones is gonna be uh, very helpful for you to get all of the time zones. Uh, you don't have to do this, but um, I usually go through and find the, the city that's closest to me, uh, which is probably America Denver right here. So I'm gonna copy America slash Denver, and we're gonna go back over to our environment file and I'm going to delete delete that and then you'll if you would like to have this automatically set up an SSL certificate uh, you certainly can do that you just need to make sure you put in a valid email with that the the last piece is that we need to actually create the folder that we specified in that environment file make dir and 8 n now we have that folder available and we're good to go. The next thing we're gonna do is start our Docker Compose. And so we're gonna just paste sudo docker-compose up-d. And that is going to start our Docker instance. 
it's going to go through the process of downloading what it needs to, uh, getting things set up correctly. And in just a minute, we're going to be able to navigate over to a web browser and open up our Notimation available for working in. As soon as we've finished the installation on the server side, then we can go through and navigate in our web browser to the domain that we specified. So for me, nan.funnelpress.link, and that's gonna pop up this username and password box that we specified earlier. So I'm just gonna put in those credentials. There it is, we are into Notimation on the first workflow available for us to use. Let me go through and explain some of the pieces of Notimation that make it so powerful. Over here, there's this plus button, which allows you to add additional nodes to the workflow. Each of these nodes uh, processes data in a particular way. You have two kinds of nodes. You have regular nodes and you have trigger nodes. A trigger node is something that happens and starts a workflow. Then regular nodes are just the processing of the data. And so you can have multiple, uh, multiple nodes all hooked together or a uh, trigger and a uh, regular node. When you are happy with how your workflow has been set up, then you, you would go ahead and click the toggle here, which would activate the workflow. And you'll wanna make sure that you save the workflows. Going down the list here, you have workflow options. So you can save the workflows, open other workflows that you've already started. Notimation, uh, deals with talking to other services. So for example, if we're working with active campaign, we want to make sure that only uh, only we can change the data on active campaign. And that's where credentials comes in. You can add additional credentials. Normally though, the way that I, I add new credentials is inside of each of those nodes, um, there's a spot to specify which credential you're using. And if there's not already a credential for that node, then it allows you to create one right there. It will be added to, to this list of credentials. Finally, you have executions. And what this represents is all of the times that a workflow was triggered and processed. You can see here that there will be any errors or uh, any success messages. All of that will be available for you under the workflow executions. We're going to be talking about these nodes in depth in the future, and so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about any one particular node right now. So that's all I have for today. I hope this video has been entertaining and educational. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for watching.